Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with both Frank Bassa and Matt, Matt Halliday from Canada Silver Cobalt Works. How are you both today? Very good. Very good. Thanks, uh, Tracy. Personally, I love having uh, two people from the same company. Uh, so what I'm going to do today for Investor Intel audience members is actually throw this at you, Frank, and have you explain to our audience why Matt is on the call, because I suspect it's quite exciting. Yeah, the reason we brought in Matt, because Matt is, uh, we needed some more geological uh, uh, know-how. He's actually worked in the area and uh, he has a bit of a successful track record of finding things. And uh, so we brought him in first as VP, then we moved him up as president and we're very happy where he is. And of course, you know, we've got that uh, resource that we came out with, which Matt will kind of elaborate on. It's a combination of silver, very high grade silver, also a fair amount of cobalt, nickel. You know, these are our energy metals. So, you know, like you notice, we cha we changed our name, but we still kept cobalt in in our in our name. So uh, you know you know we kind of welcome Matt, and of course we'll be adding other people to the team. But Matt was kind of a critical link uh, to our company. Thank you, Frank. Um, yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> our new uh, our new maiden resource at Galganda is extremely exciting. Um, we are the first company to put on a, a 43101 compliant in situ resource in the whole cobalt camp. So we're very excited about that. Um, being the first is great. Um, we have a resource of seven and a half million ounces at over 8,000 grams per ton um, inferred. And uh, it composes of uh, a couple of lenses um, that are on echelon. And uh, we have high grade silver, well, extremely high grade silver. And we also have some zonation where there's cobalt. Um, and uh, we're really excited to continue to expand this resource and uh, show the world what we can do. So Frank, that sounds very exciting to me, but some of our audience that may be new to silver and cobalt may not understand what Matt just said. So could you just kind of explain how really interesting this is? Well, the cobalt camp is, a lot of people don't understand the cobalt camp. It's actually called, there's a town called Cobalt, but the reality is since mining started here which at the beginning of the last century grades were known to be exceptionally high so basically we're talking like 250 ounces a ton extremely high grade and it's the norm for the camp the reasons like that a lot of the silver in the camp is massive native silver and uh so you know the normal approach is we find it you drill it you find it then you put down the shaft I think we're looking at putting down a ramp. The intent is, as we do a ramp, it'd be a, a, what we call a combination exploration development ramp. And in the event the ounces are there, we are kind of fully integrated. Now we do have a facility whereby we can treat the silver in our uh, what we call Tomiskan testing labs. That's where historically everybody did treat their silver in a camp. And the facility can pour over a million ounces of silver a year. So it's kind of a nice win-win. Uh, the other exciting part of it, like uh, like I said, is the cobalt, and there's a lot of nickel. Also, copper showed up, uh, so we're kind of a uh, win-win on multiple levels. Recently, you just announced being substantially oversubscribed. How can I say this? But congratulations! Can you tell me where we should anticipate these funds being directed to, Frank? Uh, most of the funds will be used specifically for carrying out with a drill program. We're looking at doing about fifty thousand meters. Uh, and it might not be enough, but the intent is to do 50,000 meters of drilling. Uh, we want to hit uh, more structures on there, then uh, hopefully follow up with a ramp. And by putting down the ramp, we'll do what I said, like uh, it's going to be a, a production development uh, exploration ramp. And uh, usually when you go down that depth, you find even more structures. And of course, since we have the pleasure of Matt being participating in this call, Matt, you know, Frank is telling me these are some pretty exciting results. Would you like to comment further on this? Sure. So, and um, you know, the cobalt camp itself is, um, it's, it's been dominated by these extremely high grade structures. Um, and they range anywhere from about two, three centimeters up to about 30 centimeters. And so when you compare it to anywhere else in the world, you're, you're never going to see these grades. Um, it's, 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 the silver is just these big, massive lenses of silver and cobalt mixed together with some, some nickel and, and copper. And, uh, you know, in the early days, 
um, they actually would chop this off of the walls with axes. I mean, they, they went down and just, they were ripping silver off the wall. So it's, um, it's, it's really exciting. You know, when you compare it to other places in the world, you know, we're, we're 10, 20 times higher in grade um, than, than most camps in the world. So it, it's pretty exciting stuff. Um, it looks beautiful too. It's, it's really something to see. Okay, well, I heard, I heard several, several of your comments, and obviously we're looking forward to uh, regular updates from you, actually, Matt, so you can explain more of this to us, because it sounds to us like we have a bit of a, is it a silver rush and a cobalt rush that we have here at Canada, silver, silver cobalt works, or just one? Well, I, I think what we're trying to do here, uh, Tracy, we did this when I was with Agnequil Mines. Basically, we mined the silver, and we produce some cobalt for free. And I, I think cobalt and nickel will be kind of the, the new oil of the industry. And sooner or later, the demand for cobalt will be so great and hardly anybody has it. Even, you know, two, three years ago, I was in Hong Kong and China and Japan. And even then they had no cobalt or worried about cobalt. And everybody thought there's cobalt in the DRC. And when I spoke to the Chinese in China, they said, no, there's not enough of cobalt. They're really worried. So, uh, you know, it's a combination. Like I said, it's a multiple win for us. But what we're trying to do is we'll mine the asset for the silver. We'll produce the cobalt, nickel, and copper for free. So we can compete on a global scale. Well, of course, we cover the issues uh, regarding cobalt on a regular basis at Investor Intel. But after that answer, it almost seems underwhelming to ask you the next question in which we had prepared because you have been making a series of announcements having to do with acquisitions. And we believe it's a very good time for making acquisitions. You recently um, did your acquisition from Polymet Resources. Re you repurchased back in options from Granada Gold. Would you like to comment and give us a bit of an update on that, Frank? Because we haven't heard from you in a while and we're dying to know what's going on. Well, what we wanted to do, like we kind of long range planners, we kind of felt we'll take back our position from our sister company called Granada uh, Gold Mines. And so basically we gained paper for, you know, 50%. And when you look at it, uh, you know, there's about seven, eight million ounces of silver, even at $20 an ounce. So basically, uh, I know this sounds a little odd, but you're talking about about $160 million worth of silver value. And uh, we basically paid, I think, 3 million shares of CCW. So 3 million shares, about $2 million. So we did pretty good on that transaction. And then we acquired this facility. Uh, historically, it was called Smithsonian Testing Labs. This facility was run by the government. It processes all the silver, the high-grade silver, for all the mines in the camp. And we're able to buy it at a huge discount to market. And we paid it in paper and part of it in cash. And uh, we're, like I said, now fully integrated. So in the event, when we do go down, get the ramp, hit the high grade, we can pour the bar. We also did proof of concept. We've poured a few bars out of that facility just to show the world the thing still works. So, Frank, please promise me you'll have Matt back on to join us as you have drilling results into the fall. And what should we as shareholders and interested parties anticipate for the fall? Can you give us any hints? I think primary thing will still focus on on the on the drilling, you know, and Matt will be looking after that program. We're also doing some other things uh, going forward. Uh, we might be drilling the tailings. The tailings are very high grade. We're trying to get a contract to drill the tailings. That'll add to our silver ounces to our our current uh, infer resource. Uh, we'll start planning for the ramp, and of course, uh, you know, we still have our add it. Uh, you know, we've got certain permits, so proceed with uh, uh, taking out uh, ore from the stopes. Uh, don't have all our permits, but, you know, everything's a little slow because of uh, COVID. Uh, you know, the ministry people are working out of their homes, so things are not moving as fast as uh, as normal. But uh, we're, we're looking at being, basically, if we can, a silver producer with uh, cobalt, nickel, copper credits. Well, as always, it's a pleasure to see and hear an update from you. And, of course, Matt, it's a pleasure to have you join us as well. Thank you both. Yeah, thank, thank you a lot, uh, Tracy. Always a pleasure. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Tracy.